How's it going, YouTube? Another classic intro. Um, I actually wanted to talk about <clears throat> NFTs, blockchain, and gaming. So it's, it's quite clear to me that gamers on the internet don't like NFTs. <clears throat> it's very, very apparent. But it seems like the developers of video games are the ones who see the benefit. What does that tell me as a consumer, though? Why would the developers, the artists, you know, the gaming companies find it appetizing? Probably because of the payment that they can receive if receiving crypto investments. Which sounds kind of greedy. It sounds kind of like cash grabby to the gamer, to the consumer. So when you're paying for a singular asset, okay, it seems kind of expensive uh, when you're paying close to 100 for something. But then when you start to look at the scarcity and what it actually means and how rarity currently in video games, I, I may have already posted that in a video, but um, video games of today <clears throat> currently we'll call items like mythic or legendary at like the high tiers and then there's like you know like a common and a rare or maybe even an uncommon somewhere in the tier um to kind of build this tier tree of rarity but it doesn't actually speak to the rarity of the item itself it's kind of saying more so the difficulty to obtain the item and what I mean by that is to prove that something is rare, it has to be scarce. Like that, that's what defines a true rarity on any sort of asset or item or anything in, in life, really. What makes oil so scarce or sorry, what, what gives oil the worth? Sorry to the world. I already gave you the answer. It's because it's scarce. It's you know, there is plenty of it, but there is only a finite amount of it. It seems like a lot, but there only will ever be a certain amount of oil that will probably be produced and usable in human life. And so that's why we base our money off of it, because we need to attach a wealth, you know, like a rarity sort of deal to it, because we use it on our daily lives to heat our homes, to cook foods, uh, literally to make foods like plastics. There are so many things that are made and derive from oil-based products, even in like, I don't know, girl skincare routines or I guess male too, whatever, uh, like makeup and all that. Like there, there's a lot of stuff that uses oil, right? And so it's such a commodity to us humans because we feel like there's a lot of it, but yet we still know that it's finite, which again, so we place, you know, a, a certain worth on it and we base our money off of it, our, our worldwide trades off of it. Anyway, I'm getting a little off topic, but that's just to show you like a real world example of scarcity. And even in gold, like there's only really a certain amount of gold in the earth and we've we've ripped most of it. I don't know. Maybe that's Maybe that's not technically true. Maybe we'll find like... A big fucking buried treasure of it somewhere. I, I don't fucking really know. But we've essentially ripped most of it that we can see on surface level right from the earth already. And we're, it's already into the world's economy. I mean, it had its big ass price pump because like everything gets put in a bubble for a little while. It becomes a very trendy thing. Investors get involved. And then once the investors feel like they've made enough money off of their investment, they pull out and they leave people with the bag. It's like every single investment. And that's why people are afraid of NFTs too, because of the volatility factor surrounding the cryptocurrency itself and the NFT. You're, it's, it's a double volatility on the NFT, which means there's higher risk and higher reward. So it's like a pick your poison sort of deal. Now, I've been seeing a topic on Twitter as of recently, 
about mass adoption and gatekeeping. How are NFTs going to be mass adopted but gate kept at the same time? It's a very good question. If you're only, if, you know, it's one thing to have a certain scarcity on something, but if you're going to have like, okay, 3,000, I'll, I'll go ahead and say, of something, it, it, it makes it very rare, very appetizing. But at the same time, there's not many people that can adopt themselves into that. If you make it 10,000, you don't even know if you're going to get 10,000 players into a game, first of all, especially if it's an NFT game that's just starting up, right? You don't know if you're going to even get 10,000 people to buy that item, right? So you don't even know if that's a good amount to put. It might be too much. It might be too little. Again, when it comes to scaling and everything, that's why everything that we look at as decentralized, it'll exist for a certain amount of time, but people that are in the industry will see that that will not be able to be mass adopted. And so they're going to destroy the whole scarcity idea and replace it with something that can be centralized. Um, even currently, if we look at Microsoft is the best example with their Azure service that basically everyone's on unless you're Amazon. Um, Nintendo and Sony, if you don't know, both use Microsoft's Azure cloud service to run their gaming servers just like Xbox Live because they basically won that race, all right? That being said, Azure, if m most people don't know this, but Azure is a blockchain, okay? They make EVM products on there officially <clears throat> that developers can go ahead and take advantage of. The only difference is, is that Azure doesn't have a coin. It, it doesn't have a coin for you to go in and buy, like, attached and associated to the blockchain itself. They got rid of that part of it and instead allowed gamers, game developers, like Fortnite, to develop their coin, right, and place it on their chain and sell it in their game. The difference is is that they, they use a stable coin and a centralized way of doing it. And this is, people are going to realize this, and they're going to adopt that because it's much more scalable. You don't have to put 10,000. The problem, however, this is why crypto fights its fight, is transparency. We as gamers and investors, okay, like whether you want to look at it or not, you as a gamer are investing your money into a game and you're hoping that that game is going to succeed so that you can continue to get your entertainment out of it okay you becoming a subscriber to netflix is almost just as important as becoming an investor the difference is what you're receiving you can either be an investor put more money into it way more money into it but also so higher higher risk but also receive a higher reward in payment when the stock goes up if it does well, right? So, so that versus being a subscriber to the platform instead of receiving a tangible wealth that you can sell off or whatever and be a part of and help kind of control board or, you know, oversee board or whatever, you know, make, make suggestions to the company or whatever, instead of doing that you receive the content as the consumer, right? You, you, you buy into it because of what the product is offering you. And so if it doesn't offer what you want, just like an investor, you could pull out. The difference is one person spending their 10 to $15 on the subscription, right? Doesn't tell the company as much as an investor pulling out a couple thousand dollars from their portfolio, right? And so who has more say at the end of the day? It's the investors. You, the gamers can scream all day about shit they don't like. But until they actually leave the product and like in masses, they won't listen to you. They'll listen to the investors who are putting the money in to allow them to create the product. That all being said, with crypto, 
there are there can be like royalties attached for artists and developers and everything so it's very attractive for them to want to make their games using blockchain technology and that's all fine and dandy in a decentralized manner because these like again you can be paid what you're worth and it's fair distribution amongst the company that way you can set it up to be like that on like a permanent basis so that even if the company just isn't doing well if investors decide they want to jump in and start selling those nfts well those artists can still get paid for that because they still did the work that's a very important tool for somebody who makes things in a game or just as an artist in general it doesn't matter what you do whether it's music or video or or mu you know what whatever it, it really doesn't matter if you're an artist you could take advantage of that and it's very appetizing the hard part is getting the consumer on board. Sim simply put, and it's not really that hard when you look at how the Titans already run these traditional companies, right? They, they know how to get you hooked onto a product. So if they all start swapping over into fucking cryptocurrencies, it's not going to be hard for them to sell it to you. And especially if they advance in such ways where you don't actually even need the cryptocurrency itself to use the blockchain product. And they're going to make sure that that happens. Look at your Xbox. Look at your PlayStation. Look at your Nintendo Switch. Look at your Xbox games that are on your PC. It'll all tell you already that we're heading in that direction. And that it's appetizing. But if Microsoft can continue to build Azure to be as powerful as it is already, the blockchains themselves aren't going to be as necessary. The problem, again, is the transparency. We can't, there's no blockchain explorer for Azure for us to look at and see who's investing what into what, which gives them actually a more sense of privacy which is actually something that crypto tries to tout. But if I can follow all of your wallets, what, how private is it? If I find, if all I have to do is find it once, seriously, that's all, that's it. All it takes is finding your wallet once and, so, and doxing it to the, to the owner of that wallet for us to be like, oh, okay, that's his wallet. Anywhere he sends it to from that wallet is obviously his wallet because everyone on the blockchain could see that. But with something like Azure, you can have all that stuff hidden in, in the background, and the only people that are able to see it are the owners of the company. Isn't that exactly what we kind of want? Isn't that the whole idea of like decentralized identities and everything? Is to have our information ours and owned by us, and we only allow the people to see what we want to see? Having everything in public on the blockchain isn't always a good thing. All right, I'm just I'm just here to spit the spitball the absolute truth because that's who i am uh, i love cryptocurrencies and i've said this many times i almost have to reiterate it in every video because it seems like i'm always talking down on cryptocurrency but that's because people do need to see the realizations the reality behind cryptocurrency and what it's going to do to us consumers it is going to make things more expensive they say that it hedges against inflation and all this and that but not really not if the investors who control the assets are putting their own price tag on it and whatever they feel it's worth. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? The volatility doesn't work for gaming. People are, don't want to like find out that something that they bought yesterday for $100 is worth $50 tomorrow. They would be obviously happy if it went up to $200 and they doubled their investment, right? Who wouldn't be? But that's a risk versus reward and when you're gaming you don't want risk versus reward you want stability you want to know okay i bought it for this much i want to be able to sell it for this much and like honestly that to me makes more sense the asset is worth this much you put it into stablecoin technology even on nfts and you leave everything at like a blank slate sort of thing like it's worth this much but then maybe there are higher tiers that have like a price uh, a price point that is stuck to it so that like i know it sounds very centralized but it also sounds more adaptable and more like consumer friendly like if i bought an asset that was worth 15 dollars and maybe it was in a loot box okay and i got the rare one the mythic the one of one whatever you know i got the extremely rare but then i could sell that for a thousand dollars because that's what they say that the cap is at because of 
you know, you don't want to destroy the economy selling fucking pictures and, and video game pieces. Like, seriously, in, in all honesty, you could really fuck up economies and where money is sitting and who has control over the world right now. Like, as, as stupid as it sounds, like, well, that's what we're fighting in crypto. But what happens when energy companies go out? What happens when... You know, the things that run the world currently start not having any liquidity to run their companies with. We start losing the very basics that we have. I'm just being real with y'all. Anyway, I'm going to sign out here because I can honestly go on about this topic forever. <laughs> and you already know there's going to be another one very soon. So anyway, peace out, Crypto Jesus.